Hello there everyone, it's ShinySparky14 and welcome back to more Final Fantasy 2 Anniversary Edition. Last time, we pretty much finished up with Seventh Falls, we got the Mithril, and we got some items of course, we bought some weapons, armor, all that stuff, Mithril base. And off screen I actually returned to Altair just to save all of you some time. One thing you'll notice though is that Altair is, is, is like, look at this, it's all messed up now. This is crazy. So apparently something big happened here. Look at look at all this damn big disaster. I'm guessing the Empire did something because they're pissed off that they lost their Mithril or something. I mean, they had a surgeon blocking them, blocking Mithril, you know? But anyways, we're going to move to up here to Hilda. Let's see what's going on in this situation. Seriously. We need to find out some information. Many were wounded in the Dreadnought attack. The shock has even caused my father's condition to turn for the worse. I hate that my father has to see this. He knows. He knows his death is near. What? Is there nothing you can do, Menwu? All those who live must someday die. It is our fate. Still, it is my duty as a white wizard to ease the pain of those who suffer. I shall remain here and devote myself to the care of the wounded. I take my leave of you. The fate of the world rests on you, Ferion. Waste no time in destroying the Dreadnought. It's the fate of the world. Wow. Games are always doing that, huh? You must save the world. Okay, Minwoo leaves the party. So, before we go, we go over there to Minwoo and the king, there's one more thing I want to do. Actually, wait. Do I have to ask something? Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um... I thought I had to ask another term. What the hell? Apparently not. Okay, you know what's really funny? I was actually talking- oh, Shut up, I, I don't- No. Okay, that's weird. I really thought- Oh, what about a pass? Nothing happens? Alright, fine then. I guess we just have to go to menu. Yeah, okay, my introduction- I just realized this. I'm, I'm not gonna start it over though, I'm not. Because I think it's- I, I think it's funny. I was talking about the Mithril. Yeah, that was the previous one, not the last video. The last video was actually the thing with the pass, that we got the pass. Anyways, uh, let's see. Hmm. What can I do then? Can't really ask you stuff here. Let's go up here and talk to you. So many perish in the Draenor's attack, perhaps it would be... Damn. Well, there's not really much we can do here. So I think what I'm going to do now is get out of here because we have to do something actually is Gordon still out there let me take a look I'm not really sure if he is no he's not the dude that was there I thought we had to talk to Hilda though that's the problem I really thought we had to do that probably not though hold on I will see you all in a bit all right so apparently we were not supposed to do that but instead what we have to do is actually go to the pub in the city of Poth, or town I should say, and talk to Sid, because when you ask him about an airship, he actually gives you more information. Airships are powered by Sunfire, I'm sure the Dreadnought's no different. So let's go ahead and learn that term, Sunfire. It's important, yeah, I'm not really sure what is supposed to make you come here and realize that you have to talk to Sid next, but that is what we have to do actually, so I did skip that step. Oh, damn it, I forgot one thing, gotta pay you again, because I'm not gonna walk that very long trip, I would rather pay you 32 gil and gladly take this ship to take me back down but yeah just remember from Palum to Poth is always the ship that you can take I obviously took it back here and off screen and now it is time to return to Altair and get some more information regarding what we have to do now that we have the term Sunfire I'm gonna go ahead and ask that term to Hilda and maybe Minwu and the, even the king let's go to Altair so now we're back here but with our other term which is again the Sunfire term which is very important to have. Let's go ahead and ask Hilda that term because we need some information. So the Dreadnought apparently is powered by Sunfire just like Sid's airship. All airships in this game are powered by that thing, Sunfire. I'm gonna go ahead and ask you the term Sunfire. Sunfire is the crest of the kingdom of Kashuan. Its flame still burns on the ground floor of Kashuan Keep. Hmm. Scott and Gordon have told me many stories concerning the flame. The finer points of the tale are not known to me. However, I seem to recall that the flame cannot be passed to just any torch. Sid told us that we might be able to use Sunfire to destroy the Dreadnought. And there's no time to waste. You must depart for Cash One Keep at once. 
If you hire Sid's airship, the journey should not take long. Hmm. That leaves only one question. What can you use to bring the Sunfire back? Very true. What can we use? Well, I'm going to go ahead and ask Minwoo or and the King a few questions regarding the Sunfire. Let's see if you know something. Every three years, they celebrate a festival of the Flame in Kashuan. During the festival, the Sunfire is passed to Eagle's Torch while its brazier is cleansed. Interesting. Oh, wait, we can't learn that because that's a green turn, damn it. So, what about this Eagle's Torch? Hmm, let me ask you. Scott sealed the gates of Kashuan Keep to protect the Sunfire in the event that they were defeated in battle. You will need the Goddess's Bell to break the seal. So we need a Goddess's Bell for something. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and learn that term. There we go. Let's ask about the Goddess's Bell. The whereabouts of the bell are known only to the Kashuan royal family. That would be Scott and Gordon, because they are family, they're brothers. The king's illness got far, yeah, okay. I'll ask you about the bell. Gordon would know where the bell is kept, but I have not seen him lately. Someone close to Scott or Gordon may know where to find it. Who is close to them? Gordon used to be here, cowering back there, remember? But he's not here anymore ever since this place got bombarded. And Scott, of course, passed away early in the game. So, we need a new lead or something. I've heard Scott and Gordon mention the bell. The gates of Kashuan keep open only to the voice of a Kashuan or ringing of that bell. The bell rests deep within the cavern on the snow plains. It will not be easy to retrieve. So it is your intention to enter the snow cavern very well. If only Gordon were here, there would be no need for you to risk such danger. But he isn't, so you must. There is nothing I can- See what you did, Gordon? Joseph knows the snow plains like the back of his hand. Okay, so we have to go to the Snow Cavern because that's where the Goddess's Bell is. There are two ways to enter the Kashuan Keep, like they were saying, in case you didn't understand that. You can either use the Goddess's Bell, or if you are a natural Kashuan, which is, you know, someone like Scott or Gordon, then you can do that too. You can simply enter without the bell. The problem is we cannot find Scott or Gordon, which means that we actually have to travel ourselves all the way up there to the Snow Cavern. The Snow Cavern is actually located above Salaman in that snowy place, the snowy part of the map. So it's quite a journey, and honestly, um, I should cut this. Yeah, I'm going to cut it all the way until I get there. But just keep in mind that uh, before we actually go to the cavern, we have to get help from Joseph, because Joseph apparently knows navigation up there a lot more. So, yeah, let's just go. I guess I'll just cut from the next battle that I get. Alright, no battles yet. No, don't leave the town. Go to the right. Alright, there we go. Time to pay you another 32 gil. Man, this, this guy's rich. This damn guy that owns the ship is seriously rich. Do you realize how much money you make? Because there's so many lazy people in this world, including me, who don't want to walk, but instead pay for the ship. Yeah. Alrighty. So, um, there's nothing to do here. Instead, we have to keep going up. Up towards Salaman. Actually, we're right, we're right there. I don't even have to cut to Salaman anymore. Alrighty, we are here in Salaman, so let's go ahead and enter. Before, actually, let me just enter, but before we continue to talk to Joseph, let me just reiterate on everything that's been happening with the story here, in case you don't understand. Our main goal right now is to get rid of the Dreadnought, a massive, powerful airship controlled by the Empire. If we destroy the Dreadnought, we will significantly slow down the progress of the Empire. So it's quite important to be doing that and we have to destroy it. How do we destroy it? We destroy it by using this thing called the Sunfire. The Sunfire actually appears in the Kashuan Keep, which is actually, let me go ahead and, uh, oh, I can't open the map here, what am I talking about? But yeah, it's in the location of known as the Kashuan Keep, which we have not been to. However, even though we haven't been there, there's no point in going there because we need either the help of Scott, who we can't because he passed away, or Gordon, or we have to acquire the Goddess's Bell to enter the Kashuan Keep and claim the Sunfire. However, to get the Goddess's Bell, that's actually in the Snow Cave or Snow Cavern up there. To get there though, we need Joseph's help to navigate up there. So it's quite a chain reaction of things, definitely. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and do this. So first step, talk to Joseph. It looks like you managed to save my daughter, thank you. That cowardly Borgen had been threatening Nella to get to me. Forgive me, if there's anything I can do to help, all you gotta do is ask. Yes, actually, Goddess's Bell. The only way to, to reach the Snow Cavern is on my Snowcraft. Oh, you have a vehicle, huh? I keep the Snowcraft hidden in the mine. There's a blue stone on the first floor that marks the spot. 
Look behind the stone and to the right, the secret room's there and the snowcraft is inside. I'm sorry I couldn't help you find the mithril, so I want to make up for that by pitching it now. What are we waiting for? Let's go. You're joining us? Ooh, very, very nice. Joseph is apparently joining us. Okay. So, the mine that he said is actually the same place where the mithril was, which is actually... Try and guess. Actually, I'm gonna save right now. Just in case, you know. Let's save. There we go. Yeah, it's actually in Summit Falls. The good news is that we don't have to wander too far into Summit Falls to claim that snow crap that it keeps hidden. So again, just a, wow, big chain reaction of steps we have to do here, seriously. Or, um, what is that thing that people call it? The, uh... Oh, I, I forgot the term. Ambushed? Oh, damn soldier. You know what, I should just... I should just cut until I get to Summit Falls. By this point, you know where Summit Falls is, remember. Head all the way west, around the mountain range, slightly south, and then head right through the canal by using your canoe, and you'll get to Summit Falls. So I'll see you all in just a bit. At least, once I encounter another enemy, I'll just cut. Alrighty, here we are in Summit Falls. Let's go ahead and enter. And it's actually very, very close to the beginning. Okay, one, en one enemy. I'll just keep this in. Why not, right? It's only one enemy. By the way, Joseph is a rather unique character. He's actually not equipped with any weapons. I'm gonna go ahead and show that just so you... Just so you know about him. Let's go to equipment, Joseph. Here he is. Barehanded, leather cap, leather gloves, leather armor. So as you can see, he is, I mean, well, you know, you can clearly see his stuff. He's unarmed. He does not have a weapon. So you might be, you might be wanting to do that, to equip something, but don't do that. He actually fights better barehanded because I did not talk about this, but if you go down, okay, he's level two barehanded. I thought he was like three, but yeah, barehanded is a very top one in the middle row or column skill level. It says two. So he's a bit more proficient as barehanded, but whatever. What the hell are we supposed to do here? Oh yeah, right here, this wall, up and right of this blue stone. So let's see what Joseph does. Open sesame, he uses some magical powers to open it. Despite what the game said, no, he used magical powers. He did not physically touch the wall at all. He was waving his hands, okay? Let's just say that. So here we are in the secret area. And what we're supposed to do here is actually get to this chest right over here. And... Snowcraft obtained from the chest. I have a question. How the hell does a huge vehicle fit in a treasure chest? We will never know. Anyways, let's go ahead and use Guy's teleport to get out of here. The Snowcraft is just like the canoe. It's a, it's a vehicle that will automatically activate once you go on the specified terrain. For the canoe, it's this water, not the ocean water, just like river or lake water. The Snowcraft... Once we head up, then we will know. Alright, back here in Salaman, because we have some more work to do. We actually have to give Joseph some better equipment. Actually, all of our characters, really. Yeah, we have an opportunity to actually get some very nice upgrades. Because we finally have a decent amount of gil. So, um, the weapons are right here. Let's go ahead and check this out. Let's see here. Battle Axe. Um, he already has that. Longbow, nope. Alright. So, not for weapons, but for armor. Wait a minute, does this place not sell armor like that? Oh shoot, I gotta go more south. You gotta be kidding. I thought this place actually sold mithril stuff. Apparently, Salaman does not. So, let's head down. Down to Poth. I will meet you in Poth. Unless we don't encounter any enemies. Whoa, look at this. There's actually a new enemy back there. A queen bee. So, I am going to go ahead and keep this battle in. Uh, let's say use a fire because I believe those bees are weak against fire. And everyone else can just attack. Because whatever. I should've just split the freaking damage, seriously. I should've just split the fire to hit everybody. That would've been better. Nah, it's whatever. I mean, I don't think I would've killed a queen bee if I did do that. Because it probably has a decent amount of HP. But there we go. Fire just targeting it will easily kill it. 109? Yep, more than enough. Definitely. Alright. Um, yeah, just got a fire here. Go ahead and attack everybody. Just attack. You know, I should start using Blizzard and Thunder more, though, because I need to level up those skills a bit. Seriously, I should be doing that. The problem is that we're going to head up to Snow Cavern, which is ice, which means that most enemies in there are actually weak to fire, not Thunder or Blizzard, so I can't actually use those skills efficiently. I'm going to have to keep using fire and level it up even more. And making my elements on balance for Maria, which is kind of a problem. Okay, where the hell am I? Oh, okay, we'll get down here. 
Yeah, Pops is down here very close. Please don't encounter more. Damn it. Alrighty, here in Poft, let's go ahead and enter the weapon shop and then armor shop as well. Let's talk to this guy because, you know, he's got the better stuff. Mithril items, let's see. Mithril sword, mithril axe is an improvement, and you have the mithril bow. So this means that I only need the mithril axe, which costs 700. Are you kidding me? That's way too much money, man. Oh well, it's worth it though. It's definitely worth it. I need it. I have to equip it to you. Let's go to equipment. Let's go to guy. Replace that with the mithril axe. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the other axe, actually, the battle axe. That will improve your damage even more. And it's generally a good idea to be giving him two. I, I always like playing like that. To give him two. Two axes. Because you can't actually duel with it. The problem is that you can't use a shield. And some weapons cannot be dual wielded. So, you know, just watch out for that. What do you have in magic here? Let me see. Cure, bling, protect, shell. Those are useful too, but I actually need some armor. So, yeah. Where's the armor shop? I can't find it. Should be up here. Somewhere. Dude, are you kidding me? Oh, here it is. Weapon. I mean, well, not weapon. Armor. Wait, wait, wait. What the hell? I can't buy armor. Armor in here? Are you? Are you serious? Do I seriously have to go back again? Why don't these towns sell any junk? Seriously. This is ridiculous. Okay, you know what? I got a better idea. I'm gonna pay you money once again, so you can take me back to back to Paloom for the freaking twentieth time. Because they actually have mithril armor in there. And I need some stuff. Especially for Joseph. Some of you might be thinking why I'm worrying so much about Joseph and not Minwu. Like, at that point. That's because there's a secret side quest. Not really secret. But there is a side quest at the very end of the game. That involves using certain characters who... Um... See, I don't know how I can say that without spoiling it. That's the problem. I can't really say why... But it is important to be equipping Minwoo and Joseph with good stuff. The reason why I did not work on Minwoo is because Min Minwoo is going to join our party again. Without spoiling too much. <clears throat> so that's why. But yeah, so let's see. Mithril Axe. Nope. Same stuff here. I already know this. Where's your armor shop? I need to visit your armor shop. Right here. Give me stuff. Wait, are you kidding me? You don't have armor either. Oh my god, this is such a waste of a video. Why doesn't anybody have armor? Now I have to go back to Altair, the very first town, which I was just... Oh, I was just there. You gotta be kidding me. Alrighty, here we are in the armor shop, and, uh... Yeah, apparently the only damn store that actually sells... Wait, wait a minute, wrong one. Over here, dude, over here. The only place in this game that actually sells mithril armor. They sell mithril weapons over there, but I don't know why not in here. So let's see, mithril shield check. Mithril helm. Alright, Joseph could use one, but I have one with everyone else. Mithril armor, I don't have enough. Mithril gloves, I can only buy one. I'm going to be ending the part here anyway, so what I'm going to do for now is... Actually, I'm going to give you mithril gloves, of course. They already have them too, so... Here's the better thing to do. I'm going to go ahead and equip Joseph with some Mithril Gloves. That's going to give him five more armor. Pretty nice. He already has his... Yeah, I got to replace his garbage stuff, you know. Let's see here. I got a Longbow here, which I don't need. That's for 75. Longsword, which I don't need. That's for 100. And Leather Gloves. That's for 15. Really? Only 15? Now it's time to buy the Mithril Helm, because I can buy one now. I'm going to go ahead and equip it to Joseph. Equipment, Joseph, down here, go to leather cap and replace that. More armor, very nice. So the only thing I'm missing is in fact the mithril armor, which, uh, well, you can easily tell by that. Look at that. I don't have a mithril armor, I just have leather armor or clothes for Maria, which is even worse. But that's fine for now. You know, everybody already has their mithril weapon and they have a mithril uh, helm and gloves. Yep. He's actually dual wielded. And Joseph, of course, will not be using a weapon. He fights better barehanded. Anyways, next time, I'm going to be all the way up at Salaman. That's right. All the way up there. And we will begin the Snow Cavern. So thank you for watching. Goodbye, everybody. And until next time.